Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about how a master programmer is made. So let's get into it. Now, a master programmer or somebody who goes from being fairly junior to somebody who is senior and has a lot of experience and so forth, you may think that time is the greatest factor here. And that is true to a point, but I've also found it to be true that that's really only a part of the puzzle. I've seen programmers who've been working for just a few years who are geniuses. They are absolutely amazing at what they do, and I have had the good fortune of working with some of them. And for their age, the things that they can do and the way that they think is truly astonishing. And I've seen programmers who have a lot of years of experience, but along the way, either they made a decision to do something else, or they put away their keyboard, or there are other reasons where their, their experience is massive, but their skill as a programmer and their ability to effectively solve problems and write good software has been compromised. And they, I find them very often in more management types of position and I mean it's it's all natural that if you if your goal or if that's the path you take in life that you go from being a full-fledged or full-time engineer over to more management types that you will switch your focus accordingly now the way that I see it is that as a software developer or a programmer when you first start out everything is going to be very challenging for you. I'm sorry to say that, especially out to the juniors there. I'm not trying to discourage you because it's great fun, but it is not something <clears throat> you learn in just a day. It will take a little bit of effort on your part and it's going to force you to face things that are a little bit tough for you. And you're gonna have days that are good, you're gonna have days that are bad and well, I suppose that that ratio switches over time, but it never completely goes away. At least not from what I can see. Everybody has bad days. And the, the, the re reason I kind of want to touch on how to go from having a lot of that, especially in the beginning to becoming a true master, is that I want you to understand that in order for you to gain more skill as a programmer and actually get more and more of the good days versus having a lot of the bad days is actually not just about investing the time because I can see that there is a red thread across or running through all of the people that I've worked with all the people I've ever met in software development and the red thread is this the years that they've spent is absolutely relevant to a point. But what's more important is what they do with that time. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you are a software developer, and let's say for the sake of argument that you get your first job as a junior programmer, odds are that you're going to, at that early stage in your career, want to jump at almost anything because it's a little bit scary in the beginning to get your first job and Honestly, I'm pretty sure that you're just going to be happy to have a job. And what then happens is that you, you, some people stay there and you're going at one point get comfortable being in that environment. And what's dangerous about being comfortable is that that is not the way to become a master. A true master is it's like going to the gym. You start out with weights that feel a fair, give you a fair amount of resistance and then you add weights on top of it. So in order for you to become a true master it's not about the years you put in it is about the resistance. It's about how tricky things you challenge yourself with building. So what I'm trying to sell you on here, the idea I'm trying to relate to you is that you have to go out of your comfort zone every now and then. Get comfortable in your skills, get comfortable in working and then try something that is a little bit outside of your comfort zone because that's the best way for you to become a true master.